After sweeping through the Golden Globes and Critics' Choice Awards, HBO's record-breaking series House of the Dragon is in the news once again. While the Game of Thrones prequel show was resumed for a second season shortly after the success of its first production on season 2 is finally underway, as fans are clamoring for a return of the brewing Targaryen civil war. But what can we expect to see from season 2? Well, old faces passing away, new faces being added, and most importantly, more dragons. So without further ado, this is everything we know about House of the Dragon season 2. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. So thank you and let's begin. Where we left things in Season 1. House of the Dragon is one of the bolder ventures in modern television history because of how fast and loose it played with its timeline. Season 1 had a time skip in pretty much every episode, and a major one about halfway through where the show swapped out its young leading ladies with their older counterparts. But the overarching story wasn't harmed by all these moving parts in our eyes because it was clear from the first episode that war in Westeros was inevitable. House of the Dragon opens up with a scene of the delicate friendship between Rhaenyra and Alicent, and closest with its fiery destruction thanks in no small part due to their children's actions. In the final episode of Season 1, Alicent's son Aemond ends up killing Rhaenyra's son Lucerys, making a civil war between the two women and their respective sides of the family go from probable to inevitable. The final shot of House of the Dragon Episode 10 showed Rhaenyra clutching her womb with soul-crushing sadness at news of Luke's death, before she turns around and has a look that screams Targaryen fire plastered across her face. We should expect Season 2 to pick up in the immediate aftermath of what transpired over Shipbreakers Bay, but that begs a different kind of question, because how does HBO plan to proceed with the timeline from that point? Season 2 will have no time skips at all, in fact you can pretty much kiss those narrative leaps goodbye, as the show will focus solely on war from this point onward, and we're going to see a lot of old faces returning with a few new ones being added to the fray. Pretty much everyone who wasn't dead or an infant before the final episode of House of the Dragon Season 1 dropped can be expected to return in Season 2. Matt Smith, Reese Ifans, Olivia Cook, Fabian Frankel, and the rest of the Blacks and Greens crews will all be returning for The Dance of the Dragons. Emma Darcy is excited to explore a side to her character that operates more of instinct and desire, as she told Entertainment Weekly when asked about what can be expected from Rhaenyra Targaryen in Season 2. For so many very legitimate reasons, she has her hands tied practically throughout Season 1. I have a feeling that the rain might be off for Season 2, she said when discussing what happened in Episode 10, and honestly, we can't find good reasons to dispute that claim. Another returning cast member excited to explore a new dimension with their character is Tom Glyn Carney, who is set to take center stage as the new king of Westeros, Aegon Targaryen, the second of his name. He told fans that he was looking forward to having Aegon have a lot more meat to get his teeth stuck into, and to cause more havoc really, and to throw a spanner into works, which he does so well. At a fan convention, and this has the fire and blood fan inside of us salivating at the mouth. In the books, Aegon the second is an arrogant party boy who think he's got all the chops to be a great king when in reality, he's just a vice riddled hipster for the lack of a better comparison. Seeing that side of him on screen, as opposed to the horrifying child fighting promoter Aegon, will be a sigh of relief for fans who are concerned the show is once again taking the Game of Thrones route. He's also apparently been working out quite a bit in preparations for season 2, so expect to see Aegon Targaryen in action, but not to be as great as his brother with a sword, as he's a bit of a goofball at war. As for the instigator of all this conflict and bloodshed, Ewan Mitchell is ready for the domino effect of his character's actions to play out in the next season. If season 1 was about seeing Amond getting warmed up, season 2 is all out war. He told The Face in an interview late last year. Steve Toussaint, Eve Best, Sonoya Mizuno, Graham McTavish, and the rest of the adult crew from the first season should all be expected to be gearing up for war as well. Two actors who will not likely be returning are Elliot Grihal, 
Greyhalt and the young man who played Joffrey Valerian in the season 1 finale. Greyhalt's character, Luke, was sadly decommissioned by Vagar, and so far there is no word on if the actor playing his younger brother Joff will end up retaining his job for season 2. Also, for fans that are hoping Patty Considine and Millie Alcock to make a return via flashback, we're afraid to have some bad news for you. Alcock firmly denied her return to the franchise in an interview with Deadline while promoting her part in West's End, The Crucible, and as for Patty, well, R.I.P. King Viserys, you were a good and decent man and a terrible, terrible king. But speaking of old faces leaving... Who will be joining the cast for House of the Dragon Season 2? While we are saying goodbye to a lot of our favorite faces from Season 1, looking at you, Harwin Strong, Season 2 is going to be replacing them fresh ones who will hopefully stick around for a bit longer. Showrunner Ryan Condal has said that we will see five new dragons in Season 2, and we can figure out the identities of those dragons that we can pretty much guess the characters that are gonna need casting. So far, we've seen nine dragons in Season 1, and one of them is already dead along with its rider. If we're going to be seeing five new ones in Season 2, and the official tally for the number of dragons we're going to see in the show overall is 17, then that means around three dragons will be left to be introduced in Season 3 or later. This also softly confirms that the sowing of the dragon seeds will not take place in Season 2, as the number of wild dragons on Dragonstone and the number of dragons that will be left over to be CGI'd to life is identical. We're almost 100% sure that two of the five dragons of Season 2 will be Joffrey's Tyraxes and Bayless Moondancer. If Joff is indeed recasted to fit the narrative of the story, then Tyraxes showing up is inevitable, because both Dragon and Brider play an important role in Rhaenyra's journey towards fire and blood. We already know that Bela Targaryen is a dragon rider, all we need is a glimpse of Moondancer to confirm it. Going off this line of logic, we should be getting the debut of a couple of dragon seeds at the very least in Season 2, and we should also finally get a glimpse at Alicent bestest boy Daeron. Tessarion needs to be in the House of the Dragon. We don't care what you guys think about budgeting and structure and whatnot. The Blue Queen is one of the most visually striking dragons Martin has ever created, and there's no way that he doesn't get her into a series that is actually trying to stick to his books. That means that Prince Daeron will need to be casted for the show. And this is possible because we've speculated before that Daeron wasn't cut from the series. He was simply chilling at Old Town, which we are yet to see. And as for the dragon seeds, we could see Hugh Hammer and Ulf the White show up as early as the first episode. Before becoming dragon riders, they were Daemon's trusted warriors. That's part of the reason why they were selected for the sowing in the first place. Hugh and Ulf could show up during Daemon's assault on Harrenhal, which could be one of the scenes that opens up season 2. And speaking of Harrenhal, a whole host of new faces will be casted for the many battles that the Dance of the Dragons will involve, starting with the Riverlands and the North. We're especially excited to see who plays this stingy young lord of Winterfell, Regan Stark, because Jace is set to create what is supposedly a strong friendship if the books are to be believed. Whether we actually visit the Aerie in Season 2 remains to be seen, because it's possible the Veil of Aaron plot from the books gets dropped entirely. But what is impossible to omit is the heinous acts of blood and cheese, and speculation as to who will play those characters is running rampant. Sarah Hess, executive producer of the show, has confirmed that they've already planned the part where Damon's cat's paws show up and flip the status quo on its head, and if rumors are to be believed, the silences Mark Stubbert has already been cast as cheese. Kieran Bu has also allegedly joined the cast as he posted a picture with Michelle Bonnard from outside of Leavesden Studios, where filming is set to begin for House of the Dragon. His role has not been disclosed yet, but he could be playing the infamous Blood if he's working with Bonnard, because we know the pair is hired by Missaria in the books, and the White Worm spy network includes madams like the one Bonnard plays. However, HBO does have a casting call out for a massive, bulky dude they're calling Boris on paper. So this theory of ours should be taken with a pinch of salt. Additionally, Elden Ring's James Dougherty has been cast in a role titled Clay, which could end up being a Meister, sort of a character in our minds, or just be a codename for some other important player in the story. And speaking of important players, we're also seemingly going to get the Witch Queen, Alice Rivers, in Season 2 as leaked edition footage shows 1899's Emily Beecham trying out for a role titled AR, who is clearly meant to be Alice. Though the footage 
footage is off the internet now. For the most part, it does tell us that Ryan Condal is gearing up for a major second season, with a casting of three to four old Jaharis and Jahera also having been put out there. But with all this having been said about who we can expect to see in season two, the big question is when can we expect season two itself to be out? When will House of the Dragon Season 2 come out? Considering the fact that the series only went into production a week ago, expect House of the Dragon to come out sometime next year. The first season took 10 months to film and 3 years to develop, so it would be unrealistic to expect another season in 2023. Summer 2024 is the expected timeline for Season 2 to drop according to Casey Bloy who runs content at HBO. The filming itself saw several delays being pushed back since late 2022 at the very least and production seeing several big changes. Co-creator Miguel Sapochnik is set to depart the series as a director, remaining executive producer for the rest of the run, while longtime HBO director Alan Taylor joins the crew to replace him. The show has also seen a reduction in episodes going from 10 per season to 8, but according to George R.R. R. Martin's Not A Blog, they still retain the 10-hour runtimes, so that should assuage some of the fear of Season 2 turning into Game of Thrones Season 8 light. And adding 5 new CGI dragons is also going to take a ton of time so all in all, we'll need to wait over a year to return to Westeros. What to expect from Season 2 of House of the Dragon? Well, war, drama, and a lot of fire and blood. Season 2 will likely cover the first third of the Dance of the Dragons from the battle over Shipbreaker's Bay to the sack of Duskendale. We say this because apparently a huge battle was bumped over to Season 3 from Season 2, which we think is the Battle of Rook's Rest, as that takes place before the sowing, which is definitely not happening in Season 2. As for the timeline, it could be all over the place. Sarah Hess was asked about Blood and Cheese's involvement the story and she replied by saying they were working on the finale and that people would not be disappointed. So you know, she might as well have said we're ending season 2 by killing Helena's kids. It's possible that the story will deviate from the timeline laid down in the books because the immediate aftermath of Luke's death saw Damon dispatch blood and cheese to exact revenge, eye for an eye style. House of the Dragon might want to let things breathe and shift around events by showing Aegon's first march or call to arms instead. There was chatter that season 2 would focus more on the green side of things and Hess's comments about Damon's popularity suggests that trouble is all already brewing in the Black's Paradise. Betrayal, death, fire and blood, these things seem to follow House Targaryen wherever they go, and the same will be true for House of the Dragon Season 2. But that's it for this video. How excited are you to return to Westeros and re-enter the spicy drama that is the Targaryen family's daily life? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.